All right, in the last couple of videos, we discussed some different range estimation methods. Now, estimation implies that you're going to get a qualitative value, which means that you're getting a ballpark idea of how far the target is. And that's going to work okay for most size targets out to four, maybe even 500 meters. On a five inch target, you only have to be within about 100 meters of the target as far as the precision of your range estimation before you start having problems with missing the target due to a wrong range input in your firing solution. Now when you get past 500 meters, especially when you get out to longer ranges, your wiggle room for error dramatically decreases because of the steepness of the trajectory as it's descending at long range. If the bullet's coming down at a steep angle, you're only going to have a small amount of wiggle room, uh, forgiveness area if you will in which you can still hit the target if you misjudge the range. So at extreme long ranges especially, you're going to have to determine the range to the target with precision if you want any prayer of hitting it. Now on our secondary functions tables that we discussed, we did mention something called danger space. So what is danger space? Well basically danger space is quite simple. It's going to help us to determine an allowable error for range determination. Okay. Now, if you look in the naval gunnery text from 1917, it's going to define it as an interval of space between the point of fall, where the round hits the ground, and the rifle in which the target will be hit if situated at any point in that space. Or uh, another definition is the distance from the point of fall, where the target hits the ground, through which a target of a given height can be moved directly towards a rifle and still have the projectile pass through the target. Now the TC 31-20-4 from uh, 1996 states that uh, the falling branch of the trajectory also contains a danger space. The danger space of the falling branch is the point where the bullet falls into the height of the target and continues to the ground. And you can see by looking at it that it's going to be dependent upon your, the flatness of your trajectory, obviously. If you have a more flat trajectory, a faster bullet with less drop, uh, your danger space is going to be increased. So that's going to give you more wiggle room for uh, allowable error for range determination. Also, the height of the barrel off the ground of your rifle, you know, the uh, or the angle from the rifle to the target is going to affect it. The higher the gun, the smaller the danger space because you're coming at an angle, right? And also the height of the target itself um, is going to affect that because we're talking about vertical distances here. And so if you have a 30 inch high target um, for the lethal bracket of whatever your target you're shooting, let's say a two legged critter, and uh, you're going to have a greater danger space due to that because you're going to have more forgiveness for a high or a low miss on a taller target than you would in a more shallow target. Like if you're shooting at a deer with only maybe a 12 inch lethal bracket. Uh, or 18 or whatever uh, your your chest area of your animal is that you're going to shoot. And it's also going to depend on the slope of the ground that the target is standing on. And that's going to have more to do with uh, a different term that we're going to define here called swept space. So danger space is something that's going to help us to determine how close we need to be with our range determination. Okay, And uh, this is going to have a, a lot to do with when you're doing your range card, when you when you establish an FFP and the spotter starts filling out a range card or if you're working alone, you're going to want to know by how close you're going to have to get that range in order to hit the target that you intend to shoot. And uh, that can have great dramatic effects on mission planning, what kind of equipment you might need to take with you in the field. If you're shooting at 2,500 meters on an HTI op, maybe taking out uh, uh, some piece of equipment out there that's small, you might have to get a real, real precise range determination to that target because at that kind of distance, you're not going to have hardly any wiggle room. So in that case, you might have to take out something like surveying equipment, a theodolite out into the field if uh, you're going to have to make that kind of determination. Or you're, you might have to know what kind of laser you might need to bring out there to give you that kind of range. So that's going to have a great effect on mission planning, equipment selection, and things like that. Knowing your danger space at your different ranges is quite important, and that's why we had it on the secondary functions table. Another important uh, detail here worth noting is that when you're looking at these danger space values, they're only kind of a rough estimation of your uh, range estimation tolerances, okay? When you're talking about your various different target radiuses. 
For example, if uh, someone is shooting at a target that is exactly 300 meters, but he misjudges the range to be something different, let's say 250, you're going to be indexing that optic not for 300, but actually for 250 by mistake. So that comes into effect too. And your danger space is not going to be completely 100% relevant. Uh, there's a different. There are some guys who came up with different methods of uh, estimating uh, their range tolerances for different size targets, and there are superior methods. So if you see people arguing about the details there, just keep in mind that, that this is a rough estimation of your level of forgiveness that you're going to have when it comes to uh, judging the range. So the message to take home here is that the more closely you range the target to determine its actual range, the, the better off you're going to be. Uh, the more you're off by judging your range, uh, the worse off you're going to be. So we're going to uh, use some of this information as a general indicator of what kind of range determination techniques and equipment you want to employ in different situations. But uh, just be advised these aren't exact values. Another term that some guys, you, uh, you might not want to get confused with danger space is danger range. And that's just talking about the distance out to which you can hold at the target and still hit it. So that's kind of like what we discussed earlier with the point blank uh, zero. Uh, if you're shooting from zero to 300 meters, like a lot of deer hunters sight in their rifle, maybe an inch and a half high at 100 yards or whatever, and uh, they figure they can still hit the deer all the way out to 300, 350, that's kind of what this is talking about. That's the range at which you can hold dead on and the, uh, the trajectory isn't going to go higher than the target at any given moment. And this is something we're going to talk about. There's a, a technique called reverse image zero, where you would actually take advantage of your danger range. And this would be for hasty target selection out in a, a situation where you might need to shoot fast at multiple targets at relatively close or maybe even medium ranges, where you're going to employ a reverse image zero aiming at the bottom edge of the lethal bracket. And you're still going to be able to make kills on those targets in relatively short order and, uh, your danger range is going to be dependent on the height of your target. If you, you'll be able to get a lot farther out with have, without having to adjust your sights if your target is taller. And another thing you're going to want to be concerned with is you need to be aware of a thing called swept space. Now, swept space is a linear measurement of the cone of fire created by shots that are going to be placed at the top of the target and shots that are placed at the bottom of the target. Now you got to take into effect the shape of the trajectory and it's coming at a downward angle usually, especially at long ranges we're talking, right? And this is going to have quite a, a variance based on the slope of the ground that the target is standing on. That's where this becomes important. So first let us consider a target that's standing on ground that is rising in front of the shooter. So it's standing on a hill that's facing towards you. Now, a lot of guys like this because a nice backdrop seems like a nice way to see splash if you miss. And that's true that it's easy to adjust fire that way if you're getting a nice clear splash on a hill behind the target. But you got to look at the picture here. Uh, for concept's sake, the swept space decreases in this case. Okay. Now, when you uh, compare this to a target that is standing on ground that is sloping away from the shooter, all of a sudden your swept space increases, okay? And that's just that linear measurement there on the ground of where if the bullet were to pass through the target um, or if the target was standing within that swept space, you would still score a hit. So what you got to think about here is, and this is important for your application of fire, and if you're going to choose to engage a target or not, that might be a little sketchy, um, you're going to have more forgiveness room. As far as your range estimation, when you're shooting at targets that are on ground that is sloping away from you. Now, it's going to seem like a less ideal situation because you don't have that backdrop that makes you feel comfortable when you're target shooting, where you can see your splash. However, if that target is uh, standing downhill and you misjudge the range, you're going to have some forgiveness there because the target is following the path of the trajectory in a downward angle, just like the, the path of the bullet is on. And the converse is going to be true on range that is sloping in front of you. 
you're going to really need to get a real close range on that target. It's, it's going more perpendicular to the flight path of the bullet. So that's kind of what we're talking about there. So just be aware of swept space. It is a little bit more dynamic to quantify those terms and make a table on your swept space allowances because you're talking about infinite possibility of angles, uh, both with your angle of fire of your, your bullet coming back down and the angle of the slope that the target is standing on. So there's a lot of different uh, things that could come into effect there. And uh, it's just a concept you're going to want to be aware of for sure. So with all these different things in mind, being aware that you need to be cognizant of your danger space and your swept space, we're going to have to take a close look at these different ranging methods and uh, see which one is going to be most ideal for different applications. And when we talk about these different mechanical ranging determination methods, we're going to discuss those in light of danger space and swept space particularly. All right, let's get out of here. Thank you.